but I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome, uh, Victor is our guest, and Amy is our guest, I guess. Uh, do we have any amendments to the uh, agenda? Uh, yes, I want to bring up something about under treasurer um, for emergency management um, uh, money allocations or uh, paying okay. uh, money yeah. out. Yeah. So if you if we if we get to other business and I forget you, Dorinda, just. Uh, Yep. Speak up. Actually, it might not be me. Who knows? Whoever it is. <laughs> All right. So uh, at this point in time, we're going to start our organizational meeting, and the first order of business to a, is to appoint a select board chair and consideration. Appoint or elect. Voting status. So are there nominations for chair? This is Steve Martin. I nominate Peter Hood. This is Phil Thank you. Oh, darn it. This is Mary Skinner. I second it. Phil, you didn't say your name. <laughs> I did, too. Oh, you just spoke faster. Okay. Are there a, we gotta, we got to get into the rhythm of this thing, or it's going to be a long night. Uh, uh, are there any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of Peter Hood to be chairman, and I would also... Uh, say we should include in that motion if everybody agrees that the chairman will vote. Is that okay, or do you want to do that as a separate motion? No, I think that should be in the same motion. Okay. So, so that's the motion. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 You, have, you have to do it by a roll call vote because everybody. Yeah, we've got to, got to say when we're oh, voting, yeah. Everybody's got to say their name. Steve, Mary, aye. Senator, aye. Phil, I. Liz, I. Okay. Peter, I. I'll vote for myself. Um, so, thank you all very much. I'm happy to continue serving as chairman. Um, uh, move, the, move that we adopt the Robert's Rules of Order. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on one second. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes. So it's been moved to adopt Robert Rules of Order. Is there a second? This is Phil. I second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order as our operating system or whatever we're going to call it, please say aye. No, you got to call the roll, Peter. Well, why don't you just, okay. Peter, aye. Phil? Aye. Liz? Aye. Mary? Aye. Steve? Aye. Okay. Appointment of a select board vice chair. Are there nominations? I'll nominate Mary Skinner, Liz. Thanks, Liz. Is there a second? Steve, second. Okay. Any other nominations? So it's been moved and seconded for Mary Skinner to be the vice chair of the select board. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Peter, aye. Steve? Aye. Liz? Aye. Liz? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Now I've forgotten where I am. Phil? Aye. Mary? Aye. Okay. Congratulations, Aye, Mary. Mary. So designation of time and place for select board meetings. So do we need to include in our motion that it is our intent for the foreseeable future that our meetings will be remote, or do we need to do that? Question for Sarah, right? <clears throat> Sarah, do you have an answer for that? Are you, who are you talking about? No, I don't think we... No. Go ahead, Sarah, were you? No, I'm sorry, Phil, go ahead. I was just saying that I, you know, I don't think we need to declare that. We, you know, we have.
have a meeting and if we're going to have it remotely, we just put that in the warning for that meeting. Perfect. I'm good with that. Does everybody yeah. else agree? I presume you do. I don't have a problem with that. I move that the select board meet at 5 o'clock on the first, first and third Tuesdays of the month. Steve, so no, I'll second. Gary? First and the third, correct? Yep. There a second to that motion. Steve, Bill, I second. second. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I both second. Uh, yep. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay, so the motion is to have our regular meetings the first and third Tuesday of every month. All in favor of the motion? At five Aye, and I'll call the roll five. again. Steve. Aye. Bill. Aye. Barry. Aye. Liz. Aye. Peter. Aye. Um, Peter, your motion said at 5 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, designation of newspaper of record. Their motion. I know many times are missing news. Second? Mary, second. Second, Mary. Yeah. I really don't think we have any choice, do we, in terms of daily papers? We don't. Mm. Well, the free press costs more. I think we looked into that before. Well, and I think I think a lot more people subside. I think we're stuck with the Times Argus for all the reasons we've talked about before. So are we ready for the vote? Yeah. Yeah. The motion is to designate the Barry Montpelier Times Argus as our newspaper of record. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Steve? Aye. Phil? Aye. Harry? Aye. Liz? Aye. Peter? Aye. I'm going around the table, so I'm trying to be consistent, even though we're not at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, we're okay. at the table. We're as sharp as can be. <laughs> okay. We're, we're, we're getting the spirit of this. Mm -hmm. Point, appointment of road commissioner. Is there a motion? I move Steve. I move Steve Barton. Mary. Okay. In a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Okay, any other nomination? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to have Steve Martin uh, be our road commissioner for the upcoming year. All in favor of the motion, uh, please say aye. Against, nay. Uh, Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Eric? Aye. Liz? Aye. Peter? Aye. Okay, Steve. So now. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations and condolences, as we always say. Yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody's moving paper around. Yeah. Well, that's you know. enough. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we are we are doing this as as one grand motion. No. Uh, you want an individual motion on each of these, Sarah? Well, I I think just for efficiency. Names for everybody. I, you know, I think for. Uh, do you want me to just read off the names and then you guys can uh, somebody make a motion or do you, how do you want to do it? I just think that considering that would be great if you've got enough, if you've got names, let's let's do it that way. Okay. Sarah, have you talked to all these people? I have talked to most of these people. One person I could not get hold of from the, I could not get hold of the fire warden, but he always agrees, and I could not get hold of Roger Hurt. But you guys, he could, if he doesn't want to do it, he can always bag out. And what, what was Roger Hurt appointed to? Roger Hurt has been up for several, for several years. He's been on the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay, would you like me to start, Peter? Yeah, go down the list. Okay, for the Zoning Board of Adjustment, reappointing Charlene Bowl, Phil Hayek, Roger Hurt, 
and Jess Clark. All of those have confirmed that they would like to be reappointed. Um, the only person I haven't heard from is Roger. Reappointing uh, animal, animal control officer uh, Erica Holmes. She is planning on moving, but for now she will be the animal, the ACO. Uh, emergency management coordinator, yes, Paul Attenti has confirmed that he will stay on at least through the end of the year, thank goodness. Um, Jason Merrill for Fire Warden, haven't been able to get hold of Jason, but otherwise that's okay. Conservation members, um, Heather Katz and Lee Roseberg, they really should be, the Conservation Commission really should uh, appoint, reappoint them or make a suggestion to the board, but you could appoint them now and then, you know, if the, I, I don't think, I, yeah, they'll put, I'll throw that in your ballpark. Uh, Wrightsville Beach Manager, uh, jo Joan Dudley, and Recreation Director Mitch Oshecki. I mean, sorry, Jane Dudley, not Joan Dudley. Yeah, right. I was wondering where that came no, from. No, I know. I just slipped. That's okay, it. Okay, so is there, is there a motion on that laundry list of appointments? This is Phil. I'll move the uh, list of appointments. Thank you. Steve, a second. second. That was you, Steve? Yes. I'll second. Okay. Um, any discussion on any of those? Do you guys want to hold we'll off? Go ahead. Oh. Do you want to hold off on the conservation commission, or do you just want to appoint them, reappoint them? I think we should appoint them. Appoint them. And ratify it. Okay. Yeah, ratify them, or they can resign, or okay. or whatever. Right. We've done our part of the deal. Okay, so we're voting on the motion we're to. We're proactive. <laughs> Whoop! I'm sorry. We're proactive. Okay. Yeah. I agree. So we're voting on this uh, this list of appointments, which we've already reviewed. All in favor of the motion, uh, please say aye. Against, nay. Uh, Steve. Aye. Bill. Aye. Mary. Aye. Liz. Aye. Peter. Aye. Okay. Granting the select board assistant authority to sign excess truck weight permits. This is something we've done for the last four or five years? You've done yes. this seven, you've done it for like ten years. Well, well whatever, the years go by pretty fast. But anyway, this, this has been the way we've been operating and it's worked pretty well as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. This is Steve. I will move that. Okay, and is there a second? Mary, yeah. Does this tell? Okay, thank you, Phil. Uh, so we're voting. My, my yes didn't count. <laughs> we're voting to grant the select board assistant, who is uh, sitting at the table in the select board's office doing her duties right now, the authority to sign excess truck weight permits. All in favor of the motion, aye. Against, nay. Steve. Aye. Phil. Aye. Mary. Aye. Liz? Aye. Peter? Aye. Reappointing Phil Hayek as Middlesex representative to the Central Vermont Internet Board and Lori Sharp as alternate to that same board. Is there a motion? <laughs> this Aye. is Steve. I'd move. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded to reappoint Bill Hayek as Middlesex representative to the Central Vermont Internet Board and Lori Sharp as alternate. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Liz? It's pronounced Lowry, but yes, aye. <laughs> what did I say? I'm sorry. He said Lowry. Lowry. Lowry, I, I know. I'm sorry if I said it the wrong way. I, uh, okay. You're saying I, though? I am. Okay. Peter, <laughs> I. Okay. Lowry, Sharp is the alternate. Excellent. There you go. Uh, reappointing Anita Kraut to the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Is there a motion? So, Mary, I move Anita Kraut. Liz moved. 
submitted statements. Would you like me to read them? They're very brief. Sure. Sure. Okay. So from Bill McManus, he said, um, I worked for the state for 40 plus years in various positions, one of which was the assistant director of construction and maintenance for the agency of transportation. In that position, I was directly involved in the budget process for give or take four years. I was also overseeing the town aid programs, bridging culvert, paving and emergency fund budgets and coordinating with each district, highway district, for over 10 years. As for education, I have a master's degree in business administration, etc. And he is interested, that is his statement. Um, Heather is, uh, she retired four years ago and, and moved to Middlesex from St. Louis, Missouri. She began her 30 plus year accounting career in public accounting as a CPA. When she left public accounting, she began working for nonprofit, not for profit organizations. She worked for two private schools as a controller and business manager. She also served as various finance positions for the Public Transportation St. Louis, and she's also the treasurer for the Conservation Commission. Wow. Yeah. They're both pretty confident. Yeah. We have a motion, please. I'll move it, Mary. I'll second it, Liz. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, Steve. Aye. Bill. Aye. Harry. Aye. Liz. Aye. Peter. Aye. Good work, everybody. Well, that's fast. Hey. Maybe, the, maybe there's some benefit to these remote meetings. <laughs> <laughs> We're all behaving ourselves, more or less. Okay, uh, moving right along. We're now back to our regular select board meeting. Discussion of issues raised at the March 3rd, 2020 town meeting. Moderator Susan Clark to attend, action likely. Unlikely. Susan, did you call in? Are you there? Are you to ask him with Susan here? Yes. Up. That Susan? Either Susan or we lost somebody. Oh no, hello, this is Roland Hilbert, just dialing in. Oh. Hi Roland. Welcome. How are you? What time was Thank you. she on the agenda? About twenty. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. No, you're not interrupting at all. So we're, we're working our way down through the agenda. We just finished our organizational meeting, and we're going on to a discussion of issues raised at the March 3rd town meeting. Sounds good to me. Thanks for the update. Okay. Um, anybody want to start this off other than me? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about. We're talking about issues raised at the town meeting. Oh, um, well, this is Liz. Um, I would say um, that I think it's a good idea for us to um, address uh, the issues around um, sort of capital spending, like a capital budget and planning for the um, upcoming expenses 
that we know, you know, we're, we're going to be incurring in the next couple of years um, and maybe considering looking at like a five-year spending plan for those big tickets and figuring out, you know, how can we include the community in that conversation beyond just select board meetings. Um, and so I had, um, just so you guys know, I had been in touch with Bonnie um, from the Central Vermont Regional Planning and also in conversations with Peter about, um, you know, possibly um, create, there's like a couple, you, you know, there's grant money, which we know exists because we, you know, the uh, Middlesex um, Village, you know, had that planning grant. So it's that same pot of money. Um, Peter thinks we're also going to be applying for that pot of money for our zoning regs, um, for planning those. Um, but there's still maybe two opportunities. Can I just, can I just interrupt you for a second, Liz? Yeah. yeah. So, so, Steve, do you know yes. the plan of the Planning Commission to do that, to apply for one of those grants? Steve's not on the planning. I think they are. That was what was said before. Right. Right. So I, I got the feeling from Bonnie that there might be actually two opportunities this year, that, like, the zoning could apply, and then if we wanted to apply, there's a, there's a, and this is, again, just up for conversation, but, like, you can, Bonnie would help us in an application and then help us actually with, like, a capital budget plan for, specifically for, I mean, that, that's what the grant is that we could apply for, is to help us create a, um, a budget outline of what it would look like to the town for, like, a five-year planning spending. So that's just an option. There's also the option of not doing that at all and having, you know, someone like Susan Clark, um, you know, moderate some sort of mini town meetings um, specifically for like a building committee or a, you know, equipment committee or whatever, or a fire department committee for the things that we're going to need um, going down the road so that we can be more transparent and communicative um, with anyone in the community that wants to be a part of, of that conversation. So, in thinking about this, I think, hello? Hey, this is Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, guys. We just started, we just, you're, you're, you're a couple of minutes late, but not very late. <laughs> we just started talking about, uh, issues from the town meeting and we've been talking about Liz was Liz was talking about applying for a uh, for a planning grant um, I was just going to add the comment that for me and we can do it either way but I would prefer to organize a committee and then have them decide whether they think they need the planning grant or not I'm all for getting planning grant help but for me, if the job of the committee is to do some research, make make up a laundry list, establish some priorities and a timetable, I just wonder if we really need uh, if we really need a grant to do that, or we just can't do it ourselves. But I'm willing to let I'm willing to let the committee decide that, or come to us with a recommendation. I should say. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how other I don't know how other people feel. I kind of like the idea of doing both, but I agree. I think we should start with our own residents. But actually putting together um, a five-year plan, <laughs> and each of those things that Sarah mentioned at the meeting are major, major undertakings. I'm not sure how we would do the five-year plan to pay for it. But, no, it would be a 10-year plan. But, but again, we can... Yeah. I, th I think the... I think the I really think the first step is to is to uh, put out put out a, a search looking for people who would be interested in serving on a committee, and then appoint you know I don't know however many people. I mean, sort of like the sort of like the school did. As many people who are interested, put them on the committee, and then it'll it'll winnow itself down to the people who are interested and involved, and keep showing up at meetings. Uh, uh, Peter, this is Phil. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I like the idea of us establishing a committee and let them do some work. 
and then decide whether or not you know they yeah. need the support of a planning grant. Also, I think if we we get enough people, I, there may be several yeah. subcategories within that planning that they you know split into subcommittees. And, you know, some some may deal with equipment kinds of issues. Some may deal with uh, building issues and breakdown, and then finally come together to put something uh, together for a longer range plan. So um, anyway, that's where I stand. Yeah. Uh, well, this is Susan, and um, thank you guys. Um, I haven't said hello yet, but thanks for, for doing this, and thanks for having it be open and everything. I know that's legal, but um, I, um, I'm not sure how involved it is to fill out this grant application. I haven't seen it. Um, but my inclination is to say that, I mean, based on the experience of What's Next Middlesex with groups that self-organized, one of which was around facilities, um, and folks getting together and, um, you know, trying to take on um, this kind of planning, I think some professional help would be really useful. Um, I think we have a lot of talented people in our town, and I think that everybody's got a certain amount of time to give. But what a group like this, or, or multiple groups, as you said, um, are going to need is some coordination and leadership. Um, and it's a, it's a job. It's a job to, especially when we're not talking about, gee, how can we raise, you know, $10,000 to put flower boxes and, you know. I mean, this is what, what Sarah described at town meeting was really substantial. And I, my, my sense, you know, as you were, you know, up at the podium looking at the group, I think people were really deeply concerned that, um, we need to take a big, uh, a big look and a hard look, and maybe it's a 10-year plan, but it's going to have a lot of zeros, this number. And so I'm just not sure that, um, that um, a, a few little task forces can, can do it without some, some help from people who have done this kind of planning before. So uh, in summary, I definitely agree that re reaching out and asking people to be on a task force is a perfect first step. But I don't see any downside to having another first step be, let's see if we can get some support for this. And if it comes soon, we don't need it. We don't have to take it. Um, uh, and I think the grant application really is, is, is like October. I, mm -hmm, okay. Am I wrong about that? The Steve, do you know for the zoning? I thought Bonnie told me October, but I'm, I'm driving right now, so I can't look at my email. Yeah, I believe the October date is right. Yeah. So, um, but can I just I'm also, just this is one. Liz, excuse me, it's Peter. I'm just concerned if we put in two applications at the same time or at virtually the same time, aren't they likely to choose one or the other? Well, I mean, that maybe would be we very, can make I mean, you never have enough money, so. Well, I mean, no, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But we could maybe ask them to prioritize that we would like to prioritize the zoning, but that this is something that we care about. I mean, I, I, there are just people that are looking at these grant applications. I'm sure that they would reach out to us and say, hey, we like these ideas, but we can only do one. Do you have a preference? Um, but can I just say one thing, at, which we haven't talked about, is that right now we're dealing with this COVID-19, and you're going to have very few people who have any interest in, like, dealing with this kind of stuff right now, and this could go on until July. So I think, you know, we want to be thinking about the fact that having, paying someone to do this might make more sense than asking volunteers who are already going to be probably fairly um, tapped out to start doing more things. And that's just my concern. Hello? 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 Hi, I'm still here. Hello. Still here. Who is the new person? Matt and Joe. Uh, I'm not new. I've been on for a while. My name is Roland. No, no. Not you. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's um, Matt and Joe. I mean, well, like, well, I absolutely agree with that, Liz. I, I think to try and to try and get this up and running right now at this point in time is going to be a challenge. Everybody has their mind on on other issues right now. Right. They're all counting their rolls of toilet paper. Um, right. <laughs> Peter, uh, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean we shouldn't decide how we're going to do it. And 
if we're going to do a, a grant application, even though it's October, if it is October, it's none too soon to start working on it. Right. Here's Steve here. One thing that, you know, before we can start on this thing, we need to come up with a list of all these items. I mean, nobody else out there is going to know this list like the select board. Right. Well, I think in, I think in 20 minutes we can come up with a major list and then put it out there and see if anybody else has any suggestions. I think we all know the biggest, the biggest challenges we're uh, facing from a facilities point of view, and I'm sure there, there's some out there that we haven't thought of, but if you say road grader, select board office, uh, town garage, you know, other, other road equipment that we need to purchase over the next 10 years. Um, the fire no, I, I think we could come up with a list pretty quick. But, but that list also has to have some priorities in it. Yeah, but don't you think, think, we, build, don't you think we build the priorities over time? I mean, the first thing to do is identify the items and then build a prior, you know, I see it as a three-phase process. Number one, we got to identify what they are. Okay. Number two, we've got to have a category which is whatever we want to call it, unforeseen surprises, road disasters, I don't know what we're going to call it, but there's going to be some item which we don't even know what it is, but it's going to come up along the way. But then, but then we can sit down and say, okay, you know, the select board sees this is the first priority, this is the second priority, this is the third priority. But I don't want to do the I don't want to do the work of the committee. I'm, you know, I'm interested in hearing, you know, and and Susan, you can help us with this, doing outreach to the community and see what their priorities are. I mean, we're going to have we're going to have our priorities, but the community, they might have other priorities. Absolutely, of and they are going to be they're going to be for whatever we come up with. Right. The community is going to be interested in what the select board considers priorities, but um, the community is also going to be really glad to hear that you're interested in what they consider to be priorities. And they may be the same, but um, I think that um, the idea, whether you decide, um, gosh, we've got um, you know COVID to deal with, we're not going to convene this group um, until the summer um, or until you know whatever, until until such time as we deem it. Uh, whatever, or if you say, you know, we're going to try to have some online meetings even though we know some people, whichever one you decide, um, just communicate soon and really clearly what that decision is. Because I think the sense I got from time meeting was that people really wanted more um, communication and transparency, which is easy for you guys to do. And, and uh, so I just think um, however you want to do this, um, how you want to do it, you say we want to do something. Excuse me, I, can you guys, I, I have to cut in, could you please identify yourself before you start speaking? Just just say, because I'm trying to keep, do the minutes here, and some of you sound a lot alike. Mary. Okay, well, you don't. You Susan, would you suggest we communicate by concourse form or, or in other ways? Um, I think, um, well, the minutes of the meeting are really important, and putting um, the minutes in the same place that you put the warnings of the meeting is legal. That's a good idea. But I think Front Porch Forum is a great way um, to tell people and to say, you know, on Front Porch Forum, we know not everybody is on Front Porch Forum. So if you know people, if you have neighbors or relatives who are interested in this, pass this along. Um, but um, I, I think any kinds of decision making that, like, if ultimately it's like, okay, we're ready, we're going to convene a planning group, um, that would, you might need to be more aggressive in your outreach than, than just front porch forum. Um, there are other ways to do it. I agree. Um, and, and again, I'm just, I'm just thinking about this while we're talking about it. My suggestion would be, I'm anxious to respond to the concern we heard at town meeting. So, for instance, we've already uh, started posting our agendas on front porch forum. We heard that loud and clear. Boom. That's taken care of. Good. Yay. Yay. We've done it a year ago, but we're, we're doing it now. Um, why we didn't think of it, I don't know, but we didn't. I would, I would like to get the word out that we are interested in people who would want to serve on whatever we're going to call it. Facilities committee, uh, 
capital budget committee, I don't know what we're going to call it, uh, and just say the idea is that this committee will be convening at some time in the future, hopefully the not too distant future, once this virus business is under control. So people know that it's our intent to do it. We're, we're collecting a list of names and we're saying we're going to do it now for the obvious reason, but Good to me, Mary here. Me too, Liz. Yep, how many Steve also. would we how many people would we want or do we say? Do we just say I think just, just this is Steve. I think you just go out there and see how much interest we can get. Right. Yeah, I mean this is Susan. My experience is that um, people, a lot of people will say, oh, gosh, you know, 12 to 15 is, you know, you start to get, it starts to get unwieldy. If you got more than 12 people, then then you can have subcommittees. Um, but before that, well, I, I think one committee, committee would be great. Committees anyway, because, you know, for one thing, you know, some people are going to be interested in buildings. Some people might be interested in road equipment. But, you yeah. know, not everybody Yeah, I be think the more the merrier. Can't have too many people, in my opinion. That's this is Susan. Well, and I also think the things that'll happen is after a couple of meetings, a bunch of people will stop showing up, or they'll only show up intermittently. And I, I just use I've I've served on I think three, possibly four school building committees. That's what always happened. A lot of people showed up in the beginning, and by the end, it was down to six or seven people if we were lucky. And that's fine. Right. Well, there are also people who approached us at the end of the meeting, and we can see whether or not they sign up. Well, and they're all they're all going to be public meetings, so you know they're going to be agendas put out. If people are interested in a particular thing, they can show up at that meeting and not show up at the next meeting. Who knows? And then obviously, yeah. um, whatever this report is, is going to come back to the select board and, and it's going to feed into the, the budget committee process. And there's thing. lots of different ways to engage people in addition. I mean, you have this group and they're doing their work and at some point they may decide they want to have a bigger gathering, you know, a big um, a big brainstorming charrette to, you know, to, to deal with the, the uh, proposals so far, or they may want to do a survey. Um, you know, there are lots of different ways to engage people, tabling at events, um, but it'll all um, happen once the, once the virus is dealt with. Right. Well, it was interesting, for instance, and I think all the select board members got uh, Patrick Wood's email where he was talking about us having periodically a more open, invite the public type select board meeting, not that they're invited, not invited to every meeting, but say, you know, this is our quarterly community outreach meeting or whatever. Uh, so, you know, that's another thing we can do, and, and this process can feed into that process, possibly. This is Susan again, and I just want to say I, I, I read uh, Patrick's email as well, and I thought it was a, a great idea, if you do, and um, I, you know, be glad to help um, maybe have – a different format where people are, you know, in small groups asking a key question that you would like feedback to and then getting some of those answers back to the select board. So have it be a little more engaging and interactive um, uh, so that people can really feel welcomed into the process. And you guys are going to know best what's the, when is the moment when, when public engagement is going to be most useful to your decision making. Yeah, and they're going to be you know, for instance, to have a, you know, one of the big items that I heard over and over again is that we want to know more about the budget process. Well, you know, we can have more formal, more inviting uh, budget meetings when we're going through that process. That's real. I mean, how many people will actually show up and participate? Who knows? But to say, you know, this is budget meeting number one of three. These are the departments that we're going to be reviewing. If you have interest, please come. You know, people, we've learned that people, I mean, I don't know how many times
times. I've said it over the years. Probably people are sick of me saying it, but I always say it. I always say at town meeting and any other chance I get that we welcome people to come to our select board meetings. We well, get the reality is we get very few. Because they're so exciting. <laughs> you know, there's some really interesting techniques like participatory budgeting where people are actually given, you know, monopoly money and asked to make decisions about discretionary parts of the budget. You know, there are ways to bring people together and show them, you know, here, here's the trade off um, and help them to have a discussion that's not just a, not just a matter of watching, you know, watching some people in the front of the room have a, you know, have a conversation, but actually not that they would be making binding decisions, but that they would have a sense of the kinds of trade-offs that, that are, and, and you would have a sense of where their priorities were. Well, and the time, you know, by, by having them come, and we're getting off topic of the facilities committee, and I apologize for that, but, you know, for instance, if they know that October, whatever it is, we're going to be discussing the road budget, which is, you know, whatever it is, 80% of the town budget. Now, you would think that would be when a lot of people would like to come. And just having some kind of a process where other than us just pass out the, pass out the proposed budget and ask if there are any questions, you know, actually have a presentation where we talk about how we develop that budget, because that's where the rubber hits the road. And then let people ask questions. I don't know. Well, are we, I mean, just, just to backtrack so we don't get too far off track. So what we're deciding is we're going to solicit people who are interested in serving on, what are we going to call the committee? Capital budget. Yeah, I like capital budget. Okay. Um, this is Maybe capital planning? Maybe it should have the word planning? Yeah. I like planning. planning. Yeah. Um, well, I like planning. Yeah, this is Joe. I like the, the planning idea. I was thinking long-range planning, capital planning, either of those are fun. Yeah. Can I say something to Liz? We have on the call, I don't know if you guys heard, Joe, Jody and Matt Dwyer are on the phone, and Vic is on the phone, and Ron, I don't know if they want to say anything about it. check if they're still there. Roland, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Vic sounds like Vic's still there. Yeah, Vic's still here. How about Jody and Matt? Yeah, still here. Okay. If you leave, please say so so I can put you put that in the minutes. Of course. To, to bring this to some kind of closure or this part of this uh, for this evening, I would, I would ask Sarah to put the word out in the usual manner um, that we're interested in a list of names with the proviso that we anticipate that it will be uh, late spring, early summer, or I don't know how we want to put it, uh, by the time we're actually going to be convening this committee. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You've got that, Sarah? I know you've got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> so um what other what other issues um, do we have from from town meeting? I'm just looking here. Um, the other thing, the other thing I had, and I know, uh, and I know, Steve, this is this is likely to be an issue, but we had quite a bit of conversation about the uh, 
summer highway schedule. Yes. And I think we need to, and I, I'm not saying we need a committee to deal with this, but I think we need to to, uh, to revisit that, whether that idea still makes sense, whether it works, whether it doesn't work, uh, and, and get some feedback out to the community about that. Okay. This is. <clears throat> Go ahead, Vic. Uh, yeah, this is Vic Dwyer. Um, yeah, I think that uh, what I'd like to see is, uh, you know, we had different people uh, commenting how things were being run, and I'd like to sit down sometime with Steve and the select board uh, members and uh, Paul and have a discussion. I think that would be beneficial for all. I've talked with Steve. It was a very, I think Steve will agree with me. It was a very productive or uh, agreeable uh, conversation we had for an hour the other day. I really appreciated it. But I, I would like to call in uh, uh, some other members of the town. You mean on the select board or people from the community or both? Vic, Mary here. Both. Yeah, anybody wants to come? Well, I would yeah. I would suggest, well, we, we can think about it. Well, the select gonna... board will be there if I ha if uh, uh, if we're having a meeting with the select board, the select board will be there. I just other interested uh, uh, you know, town people. I would I would suggest that we we have this as a you know, number one on the agenda select board uh agenda at some meeting in the future and just say, you know, we want to have an open discussion about about the uh, maintenance of the roads. Anybody is welcome to come. It's going to be, you know, I don't know, but promote it more than a regular select board meeting. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so that's, that's, I, that's fine. That's my thought. I, but, it, but it should be, it should be a select board meeting. So we have minutes, it's on the record, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. Correct. Uh, what I, what I don't you want know, is, what I don't want is, you know, some some group which is meeting which has no formal uh, authority under the town. I mean, if we're gonna do this, let's do it the right way and do it up front and have minutes and right. notice and warnings and, and all the stuff. Right, right. And to clarify, I think, you know, it, it would be suggestions how we could do things better or what might want to be addressed, uh, uh, a, a, a list of priorities that uh, we feel that uh, might want to be addressed and, uh, you know, work it out with the select board and, uh, you know, come up with a, a, a plan. Yep. Yep. So, the, so, so here's, here's the question that I'm just thinking out loud. Is that, mm -hmm. is that a meeting where you would meet with Coach Foreman and the road commissioner and then all come hopefully holding hands to the select board or does that process take place at a select board meeting? Well, I would say uh, for, for me it could go either way. Uh, you know, uh, what are your thoughts, Steve? Well, this is Steve here. I, I think that probably it would be beneficial if we had a meeting with Paul and myself prior to this just to yeah. get everybody on board of how we come up with these numbers because it's going to take a while. And and just to go through that at the select board meeting, uh, it would take several select board meetings to get through it. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone else? Peter, this is Phil. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with Steve. I think that um, there should be a pre-meeting uh, with the parties that, that Steve suggested and let them come together um, and bring some of the issues, commonality, disagreements, et cetera, to the select board. Otherwise, I think we could be into this thing for multiple meetings and it could get rather out of control and not be very productive. So I like uh, I like Steve's approach to it. Yeah. Mary here, yeah. I like that approach too because um, when Steve presents the budget, he has all the backup sheets. 
um, that he has available to go through the expenses, and that might be helpful for some of the people who are interested in the issues, not just how you run the road crew, but how you make the decisions on how much to add for and the priorities on doing certain projects. And I, so I think it would be, I, I echo what everyone else has said, I think that pre-meeting would be very helpful. So what I would suggest, Steve, Mr. Newly Appointed Road Commissioner, I'm going to put it on broad shoulders to organize that meeting. Okay. And then once, once you guys meet, then we can put it on the agenda of the select board at an appropriate time. The truth of the matter is, this is probably a good time to, uh, to work on some of this stuff. I don't see... You know, we've got a very active emergency management committee trying to trying to deal with all these virus issues in town. I see a lot of things getting, uh, you know, quieting down and putting aside for a while. So maybe this is a good time to talk about these issues. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, right? Okay. You're good with that, Vic? I noticed. I'm good with that. This is Vic. Okay. I think there should be a lot of notice so it doesn't end up just being Vic and Matt and, and Amy and uh, Paul and um, Amy. Steve. It should be whoever else wants to weigh in on those issues, on the issues. Yeah. Mary here. So we need a lot of notice. Of. Okay. So, Steve, you, when you get that semi-organized, if you'd let Sarah know, she can put the word out. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, what other uh, what other issues do we need to think about from town meeting? Well, let's ask the people who aren't on the select board. Is there anything else? Mary here. Amy or Vic or Matt or Jody, Roland. Anything else? Uh, I think those were the takeaways that I uh, that I heard. Hi, this is this is Matt. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can. Yeah. So, so I I heard a comment at the meeting that was uh, discussed that. Uh, a lot of the, and I don't know how we address it or if this is even the time to address it, but it seemed like there is a pretty good consensus of people who felt like uh, pretty much only the people at town meeting had a say with on what what the, you know, however many 1,800 people, 16, 1,800, however many people are in our town, uh, what we're actually doing uh, in our town how do we address that issue where more people other than other than obviously more people come to town meeting how do we how do we go about that i mean getting more people uh to have a say in what's actually going on and what we're voting on in this town so um i'd love to hear uh susan spark respond to that because she's an expert on town meeting but I think my would be Matt that uh, if we can get people involved in this in this road committee uh, process, have that being some kind of an ongoing process, get people involved in these facility committees, make the budget make the budget process a much more active process. That's going to lead. That excuse me. That's going to let a lot of people have the opportunity to participate in the process. You know, we don't very often have, and I couldn't agree more, very productive discussions about the budget. Oftentimes, we have almost no discussion, or we have a we have a discussion about the library, or we used to say we used to have a discussion every year about the swim program, nine hundred dollars. You know, but we don't right. we don't the roads the roads are basically eighty percent of our budget. So getting a lot more people involved in that process and giving them a chance to be part of developing the budget for that work, I think is going to be an important part of, of uh, 
of your process. Your thoughts, yeah. Susan? Uh, well, yeah, I would um, <clears throat> I would echo that. I think that a lot of communities, you know, well, people across the across America are trying to figure out how do you get more people to vote, how do you get more people to be involved, even in presidential votes. Um, there, are, there are years when we, even when we're voting for president, that we don't get 40 percent of the people to, to use the ballot box, and that's the ballot box. The ballot box is easy compared to town meeting. So, I think that what we need to look at, and, and this is true, I think, of town meeting throughout the state, is what do we do on the other 364 days <laughs> to feed that process? Because town meeting is supposed to be the final um, decision making in a year long. Um, you know, uh, community. It was, it was never intended to be the only time we get together, uh, and it's asking too much of it to, 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 to have all of those conversations. So I love the idea of really reinvigorating um, our community conversations throughout the year um, in meaningful ways so that when we come to town meeting, the things we're voting on are things that we helped to, to create and shape and we feel better about, um, about the things that, that are moving forward. They're better informed. Um, so I think committees are a really important way, having the select board meetings be more, um, having specific ones where people can um, come in and make their views known and be heard and have that change um, the content of what we're voting on at town meeting um, is, is, a, is a really important thing. Um, I, I think that getting people just to come to one meeting a year where they're voting yes or no on something that uh, they didn't have much help cre uh, in creating isn't what our system, it's not the best use of our system. I, I agree with that. Hi, Peter. This is Amy. Um, can I sort of follow what Susan was saying? Sure. Um, so, it's interesting when you think about what's going on right now with this virus and how many people, I mean, we're, there's three of us sitting in a room and we're at least six feet apart. <laughs> um, but if, if town meeting were supposed to have happened today, nobody could have voted. Um, and coincidentally, I think that makes a, um, it provides a really good example of why having our budget be on a floor vote at town meeting being one meeting that takes place one day, one time, once a year, um, is not really equitable across our community. It's, it's completely um, unfair to people who quite literally are unable to make that meeting. I think it's wonderful, the idea. I want to um, really give a high five virtually um, to the idea of the budget meetings during the, during the course of the year, to the idea of having more participation from the community, more and varied participation from the community on different types of committees, um, helping build the budget, get more people involved. That's wonderful. It does, as Susan said, it, it's sort of an age old problem, you know, getting people involved. Um, but. What I was getting at from the floor at town meeting was really the logistical issue that we have at hand, which is a handful of people, less than 150, voting on our budget that affects nearly 2,000 town residents. Um, that's, that's a really, really small percentage. Um, and I'm not going to do the math really quick. <laughs> um, I don't have my calculator handy. but. The point being, we have a real equity issue, and there's lots of different reasons why people could not make that meeting. Some may be personal choice. A lot of them may have been actual, you know, reasons people don't necessarily want to share. But the bottom line is... 7.5%. Oh, Sarah has done the calculation. So about 7.5% based on a, two, a population of about 2,000. That's... That's what it took this year. That's the number who were there who voted in our budget. Um, yeah, it's a real problem. I mean, I myself know almost all of my neighbors on my road were not there. And the neighbors who I know on my road who were not there, more than 70% of them were working. 
at the time town meeting was happening. And those people work hourly jobs where they could not get time off. They do not work for the state of Vermont or a non-governmental organization or some other private nonprofit that gives them a paid holiday day off to go to a meeting in town. The rest, the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I hear what you're. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. The rest of the world currently. doesn't get that benefit. I mean, that's a real lovely, beautiful, mostly white collar benefit, and we have, we have a lot of people who don't get that. I'm just going to I'm just going to interrupt you here to say that what you're talking about is an issue which we have heard many times down through the years. So why are we still talking about it, Peter? So why Amy, hasn't how, why hasn't it come? Let up? me talk. I let you talk. Hey, now sure. it's my turn to talk. Okay. Thank you. So the town meeting solutions committee has looked at this over and over and over again. They need to look at it again. I just, my fear is, my fear is this, okay? And the school budget is a perfect example because the school spends way more money than the town does, double the amount of money. Nobody shows up at their budget meetings. I mean, the last two I've been to, if there were one or two people from the whole town of Middlesex there, that's all there was. And then, yes, everybody gets to vote on the budget, but who understands the school budget? Nobody does. They don't go to the meetings. They don't participate in the process, and they don't have any opportunity to amend the budget from the floor. So, you know, if what you're talking about is Australian ballot, I think personally that that's a mistake, and I also think towns that have adopted that, their town meeting fizzles out to be nothing, and there is no more town meeting. I would, and I would, yeah, I would, I would, I that I would disagree. So I, would, me, I would just add me, that. Let me finish, please. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Susan. So all I'm saying is, you know, I don't know the perfect answer to this. Certainly, if there is, you know, years ago, town meeting used to be during the day. We changed that to put it in the evening to allow more people to attend. And I know some people have to work in the evening. You know, should we have our town meeting on Sunday? Should we have it Saturday afternoons? You know, we can change the time if there's a better time, which is going to get more participation. My thing is that for whatever reason, yes, there's some people who absolutely can't be there for whatever the reasons are, but by far the most people who aren't there, and I don't know what the numbers are, maybe Susan has some of those numbers, are just people who feel, feel like it's a preordained process and you know, everything's going to pass automatically anyway, so why should I spend three hours of my time uh, sitting there with my friends and neighbors? And I do think that getting more people involved in the underlying process will help with that, not that that's a perfect answer. That's my thought. But what if it were yeah, happening hey, Peter, today? Um, think, about, think about if it were happening today. While it has been important in our state history, <clears throat> Times are changing, and so do we need to move with them. We are not accommodating a large percentage of our population. And whether they choose not to come because they think that their vote isn't going to matter or they aren't able to come really isn't the issue. There were more than 650 votes on the school budget in, in, the, in that particular budget, and the school didn't even hold a real meeting for budget talks, and they didn't even provide a real in information sheet or booklet. They provided a sheet about the budget, and yet the school budget did pass. So there's a lot of people who voted yes for something they don't even know what it equals. That's exactly my point. But but the, <laughs> but the fine. But still, that gave the opportunity for 650 plus people in our town to cast a vote on something that then goes into a larger pot. Your personal feelings so, about town meeting, I recognize so, them. But, so, Amy, just to be clear, are you saying do away with town meeting and vote on all money issues by Australian ballot? Is that what you're asking for? I think that anything that affects someone's pocketbook, so yes, budget issues, should be on a ballot, period. At this day and well, age, to, absolutely. That it needs does. to be a town-wide vote, and it needs to be a petition. So you certainly have the option to do that if you choose. I'm... I, I, I suggest you get involved with the Town Meeting Solutions Committee 
and try and figure out how to get more people involved in the process and get more people at town meeting. Yeah, this is Susan. Amy, I'd love, love, love to have you on the Town Meeting Solutions Committee because those questions you're asking are indeed the questions that the Solutions Committee has been dealing with over the years. I need to say that, number one, this is a really longer conversation than we have time for. I've had a lot of conversations like this, and, and there's a lot of underlying issues that, that are important to address. Um, I do need to tell you that um, your assumptions about equity and your assumptions about who comes and who doesn't come um, have actually been studied by uh, <laughs> university professors who have sent, you know, for decades people out to town meetings and looked at what the demographics look like. Is there systemic bias in our format? Because if there is, that's really important to know and important to change. And the findings are that there isn't. Now, I'm not saying that your observation isn't your observation is we all have our observations, but there are important trade-offs and it's an important discussion that is a longer one than we can have here. So I would really value having that conversation with you. Sure, I, I would be glad to have that to conversation. To I'm sure the meeting needs to move on at this point. Yes, we need to, we need to. Um, I do think that, uh, I just want to say one last thing, that if we did have a petition, it would be for uh, a meeting, and I just think at this point that's that's a, a, a bad idea because of the virus. So I think it would need to be later this year. Well, she's saying for a special meeting, not, not a special meeting. She's asking. Yeah. yeah. Susan, just to clarify, oh, no, 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 Susan, just to clarify, you're saying yeah. that you would need you're you're talking about a petition for a special meeting versus bringing a petition to the upcoming to the 2021 town meeting, right? I mean, I, I personally think that um, having the latter, having it be at a regular town meeting, would be a lot smarter. I think special town meetings tend to not necessarily be as as, as rich of a conversation. So um, I think, you know, better to have it be petitioned for next year. That that would be my opinion. But it certainly wouldn't do it now. It's just a crazy time. No, no one was talking about it. Yeah. We're back to square one. People can't get together. If there were a month ago... What would it, our meeting have looked like? Would we even have a budget? So I just leave that with you. I'm happy to be a part of that um, that group, Susan. You know how to reach me. That, that would be great. And this is the group, by the way, that created remote town meeting participation. So we're modeling how to have remote meetings uh, if, if we need them. So, yeah, it would be great, uh, Amy. I'd love to work with you on it. Okay, guys, we need to, we need to move on or we're going to be here. Uh, we're going to be here all evening. I would suggest that, uh, I mean, if anybody has anything to add to this discussion, we can certainly uh, certainly bring it up again. I would suggest, and we seem to do this every year, but I do not think uh, trying to work on our select board goals is a good thing to try and do tonight. I would defer that to another meeting. Yeah, everybody agrees? This, I agree. Yeah, yeah this is true. I agree. Uh, and let's, uh, let's get on to a discussion about the COVID-19 preparation and action. Uh, are we talking about um, what we're doing so far? Well, I, I, think, I think having a little update on what we're doing so far, and then I guess we need to formally make the decision that all public meetings are going to be held uh, remotely until further notice. Is that right, Sarah? Uh, yeah, I think we have a couple of issues that we need to discuss. One is establishing that all uh, public meetings be held remotely, and how and where those will be is where those will be held. I think this is a good model. This seems to be working. This is the most participatory pub, uh, select board meeting we've had in a long time. Um, the other thing is that we need we have some. Well, Dorinda has some financial questions. Um, no, I know that. We'll okay, get, we'll get to those. But is there? Do we, do we want to hear an update on the, on the uh, COVID-19 thing, or do we just want to go ahead and vote on holding meetings remotely? I don't think you have to vote on holding meetings. I hear an update. Yeah, I'm not sure you have to vote on holding meetings remotely unless you want to just do that, but it makes you feel better. No, we don't need to do anything that makes us feel good. I, I say we... I'd like to hear a brief update, Mary, here. Yes, Sarah, do you want to talk about it to what... Okay. I've been talking with Paul more than I have. 
All right. So um, the emergency management committee met, uh, had an emergency meeting of the emergency management committee, uh, committee on at the fire department on Saturday. Liz Sharp was there. So was Lowry, Rosley, Ross, Lee Blappen, and uh, Doug Hansen from the fire department. Um, and Bruce Stevenson, who has a uh, PhD in microbiology and is interested in a uh, background in uh, emergency management. So he might take over for Paul Otenti after Paul uh, retires from this post. The number one issue was prioritize, uh, getting a list of prior priorities, what needs to be done. And the first one was communication with the public, maintaining an open uh, line with the public about what the town's doing and uh, soliciting help and also soliciting um, trying to find people who are in need of help and what has happened over the past I'd say past few days that's become very very clear is that we have an elderly population I'm talking about over 70 years old over 80 years old of people who are isolated in many ways uh, some of them do have grandchildren who can get them things to the can get things to the gross from the grocery store for them. Some do not have the resources or the computer literacy or even the access to computers to order things online from, you know, Instacart or Village Market. So I think the management committee right now is really concentrating on that. Um, the other issue is uh, getting volunteers and you guys are all really, you know, uh, everyone who is on this conference call should be aware of their neighbors who might need help. Uh, and how to approach them to say, calling somebody who is uh, elderly, who may not have, who may be just be getting in the car and going to Walmart, which they should not be doing, and saying, how are you getting your groceries? Do you have do you have someone who can get them for you? If not, would you like to fill out this form that Lowry created uh, so that we can put you on a list of people who may need grocery deliveries? Uh, that's 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 where we that's where we are as of the end of today is doing kind of like a neighborhood outreach. How about volunteering with anything else that that needs to be done where your committee needs help or? Well, we need to order some some supplies because we're going to have to figure out uh, we're 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 going to need some supplies, and then we have kind of like an iffy thing where we have, for example, we have a couple of people in town who said, "Well, yeah, I I was just about to go down to this store for a gallon of milk and butter." You know, how are we going to deal with that? Are we going to take money from them? No one wants to take cash. No one wants to have that close of a contact. Does the town have a, a, a charity a fund to pay for this? I mean, those are kind of the bigger issues that the, that the committee needs some direction from the select board on. How do you, as the people who oversee town funds, how do you want to see this? Do you want to see any town money going toward this at all? I mean, how do you want to do this? So I think we've got two, two issues here. If, if people have money to pay for their groceries, they can call a Vision Market or Shaw's or other places, give them their credit card online, they'll put the groceries together, a volunteer can go down and pick them up and deliver them to their house. That, well, done. Yes, or, or That's else, one issue. Yes, right. Okay? Yes. The other issue is if because they've lost their job, they have no money and they can't afford to buy the groceries or the medicine they need, that's a different issue. And the answer is, we have no budget for that. No. But Peter, I think you know, do we need to do we need to find a pool of money to to do that? Are there other resources for that? In the in the past we've you know, we've referred them to local churches and other and other organizations. I'm not sure that that's the right way to do it this time. I'm not sure, Peter, that that is the major issue that the emergency management committee is looking at now. What they're really looking at now are people who are Granted, they are not on the computer. They are they they are supposed to stay inside their houses. They're over seventy years old. They're in their eighties, and they don't know how to get groceries. That is the issue that we're dealing with. These are people who are are not working, um, and have not worked for a while. So, uh, my generation, the old folks. Well, I didn't want to say that, but yes. <laughs> I read the posts online. I, I mean, I almost think that needs to be a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor thing. 
happen, Mike. If you're aware of somebody who is in that category who lives down the road from you, you know, go down there and reach out to them. I mean, they're not gonna they're not gonna be looking at front porch forum. They're who knows if they're even getting their mail. You know, I mean, that's a problem. Um, this is Liz. Uh, Sarah, did you mention um, the piece around Lowry trying trying to institute a model that already exists? in the state in other communities, which is a um, sort of neighborhood captain yes. for areas of town. Yeah, and that was um, so. So today at the meeting, Liz, uh, at the 1 p.m. meeting, he said that Lowry said he's got a lot of volunteers who have come forward saying they'd like to help. And he hopes that out of that list that he's got, that there will be kind of neighborhood captains, you know. So, for example, okay. my understanding is that Putnamville is very cohesive. Those guys are all looking out for one another. That's great. Um, and, you know, there's somebody probably, um, Jennifer Miller Arsenault would probably be the captain, for example, for Putnamville. I could be the, put the captain for Shady Real Road. That's why I'm saying to the select board and uh, anybody else who's listening here, if you've got a really good finger on your neighborhood, you should step forward and say, I'm somebody who could contact people in, uh, up and down my street because I know them. And that's what, that would be go into Lowry's neighborhood, this captain thing. Right, right. So, so Lowry's doing that. And then on a more like county level or, you know, central Vermont level, just so you guys know, um, with my role at Capstone, um, we're, there's a couple meetings tomorrow that I'm going to be <clears throat> involved in, um, specifically around food security, which I think is sort of the biggest issue, I think, facing us at this point um, for, for our community. Um, and, uh, and, you know, beyond what we do already with the food shelf, but figuring out how we can make food distribution in, you know, the more rural communities. So, like, we have our Middlesex food shelf, so does that mean that, I mean, we've already ramped up a bit with the ordering um, and may, you know, decide to deliver food from the food bank specifically to Middlesex families. So, it's going to be, there's going to be sort of a regional or a county-wide level as well as then individual towns, I think, is this is how this is going to roll out. So there is going to be, you know, a responsibility on our end of Middlesex to be able to make sure that Middlesex people, people's needs are being met. Um, and that's sort of where Lowry and Paul and the Emergency Management Committee is fitting in. But they're just a piece of the bigger puzzle that begins really at the top with the state. Um, and uh, so there will be sort of an incident command system in, in Washington County um, that is run by I don't know who, but I know Sue Minter, my boss, is involved in the um, sort of planning of that um, team of, of people. Um, but, um, but anyway, so on that level, because I think, you guys, this is truly going to be for the next – you know, eight to ten weeks minimum that we are doing what we're doing right now. Wow. And food is getting, it's not that it's scarce. There's no, there's no food shortage, but people are hoarding and people are going to the stores and buying out things and it is making it difficult for stores to um, increase their, or, or, or to keep their shelves stocked. There's not a shortage of food, nor is there a shortage of even, I think, workers to deal with the food. It's more about the fact that everyone is panicking um, and, and, and hoarding purchases. So um, I think that's going to calm down um, in the next week or so as stores kind of catch up and people realize, okay, there is food. Um, but, um, but for those who are food insecure in our town and there are – plenty of them. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to the school um, principal to find out what families in Middlesex may actually need access to food that may not know how to reach out or what they should be doing at this time. So. Terrific, Liz. You met her as a per person for the job since she did help with the uh, the cleanup after that terrible um, flood we had. 
Yeah, I know. It's, we're very grateful to have her. Any other comments, anybody? Huge amount of gratitude from this end. This is Susan. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Sarah. You guys are are really going for it. And Sarah, I know your job description has just changed by about 120%, and I just want to say how grateful we are. Thank you, Susan. That's very nice of you. I, I agree also. I think it's just a station of the, of the town we live in and the good people in town who are willing to uh, to do this work. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of what's going on. We're a community despite the fact we can't be together. <laughs> hey, oh, I'm oh, going oh, to start organizing online cocktail parties starting next week. Uh, Peter, Dorinda reminds me. Sorry. I'm notice, look, noticing your uh, inbox. So, you know, what we need to do is we need to learn how to use Zoom because then you can see each other. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Peter, you, uh, I uh, forgot. Dorinda just reminds me, just talking about compensation for employees. So Marika is going to come in tomorrow and she's going to do some recording for several hours, um, and then she's also going to try to put together a book, uh, a manual for Dave. Uh, she's probably not going to clock 14 hours. Uh, is there any, do you guys have any views about how we, do we stick with the compensation that we've, that Marika's normally had 14 hours, or do we just, or do we, does she put in her hours for what she actually worked? Granted, she's I'm almost. Sorry, you lost me. You lost me, Sarah. I didn't hear the first part I of that. Think we should, she should just bill what she actually spends her time doing it, get paid at the rate yeah. that she was working at before she retired. She's retiring no. April 1st. Oh. oh. So, well, then she should no. be paid for 14 hours. Um, no, I don't know. That's my question. Well, this is Marika. Excuse me. I, I missed the first part of that. So this is Marika working through a transition process and putting in some extra time? So Marika is not, I've asked Marika and, and Dave to not come into the office on the basic on the basic premise that the fewer people in the office, the better. It's a small office. Yep. We're, yep. we're supposed to stay six feet away from each other. It's hard to do that when you've got a bunch of people all over the place. But also, because if I go down, then I would like some healthy people who can back me up. Um, Marika, Marika is eager to do, Marika is going to come in tomorrow what, in the morning when I'm not here. She's going to do a lot of recording. And then I've asked her to, at Dorinda's suggestion, a great suggestion, take a whole bunch of information home and put together a manual for Dave. So that's good. Um, my question is, obviously, she, I don't know if she's going to clock 14 hours this week or next week. How, do you guys, how do, we compen how do we compensate these people who suddenly have been told not to go to work because uh, of the, the space restrictions? So, I mean, and I'm just asking the question. So, it isn't feasible to move her computer upstairs or to move it? No. I mean, I'm just... No, no, no that's not feasible. Why not? Well, because okay. it's incredibly... Her, she's got the most networked <laughs> computer in the, in the, in the office. Can't we can't rewire that. We can't rewire that. Sure we can. Well, first no, of all, but I'm not giving anybody a hard time. I just, I just want to think through the process. I mean, my, my quick answer is probably we should pay her, but I would hope she could find 14 hours of productive work to do that we're paying her for. Okay, that's what, that's a great answer. I'll t give her that answer. I mean, I, I bet you can. Yeah. I bet without thinking too hard, you can think of all kinds of things she could do. But I don't know. I don't know that that's the case. But. We're talking, we're talking about a small amount of money. We're talking about a long-term employee. If we're telling her not to come in the office, then, you know, we're telling her to do that. She isn't asking to do it. We should pay her. Well, we've only got three more weeks of that. I mean, this is right. this That's week. what I'm saying. We're talking about peanuts. Thanks. But we Thanks. should pay her. Okay. Certainly, I would think, for instance, she could work on that handbook from home. Yes, she can work on the Maybe handbook not. from home. She cannot train Dave. That's the problem, because they would have to sit side by side. Yeah, I get yeah. that. I mean, my, my thing on these things is that we really have to work with individuals. I mean, we have our... Uh, have our road foreman who is likely only going to be working three days a week. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we've got to deal with these issues as they come up and 
try and be as fair and reasonable as you can be. Did Wait a second, why is Paul only going to be working three days a week? Mary. Because he has because he has kids at home, he has to look out for her. Anyway, you want to respond to that? The... Steve, are you there? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Could you just yeah, bury his head? I... Why does Steve? Why can Steve only work three hours a week? For three days yeah, a week, I'm sorry. So, so Paul is going to be working three days a week uh, for for a short period of time. Anyway, his wife is working uh, three uh, three uh, three twelve hour shifts. Um, anyway, so he is watching the kids. So he'll only be able to work three days a week, but he also will be able to. Uh, go out and do like he normally goes out and checks roads in the morning early he still can do that before he you know and he can call in talk with his talk with the, the road crew uh, on the days that he isn't there uh, but, but this is for a short interim of time we're talking about uh, three to four weeks well however long they're not in school so that that comes back to the compensation question. Is he going to be working 40 hours, or are we going to be compensating? May, no, no, he may not be working a full 40 hours. If he isn't working 40 hours, it will be whatever it is. If it's 32, it's 32, whatever. Okay. Can he get paid for the time he works? Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. We've had that discussion already. Okay. Uh, this is Phil. Uh, quick question. Paul had uh, contacted me uh, yesterday uh, to see if we had an extra laptop. And, I mean, we're in the middle of this transition, and we don't really right now. We do have the Chromebook that we were going to set up as a public computer. And if he's able to use that instead of a laptop, I would like to let Paul use that in this interim because I think a lot of our technology infrastructure issues are going to be on hold right now. So is anybody opposed to that? No, I do have a, uh, I do have a question, may. though. Does he, have, does he have Internet at his house? Yes, he does. He, he does. <laughs> he does. Wouldn't, it make, uh, wouldn't uh, it make sense for a month to move his computer from his office in the town garage to his house? <laughs> This is this is Steve here again. I talked with Paul about uh, this stuff. He has a laptop and he and he believes he's all set up to be able to handle everything. But what I would oh, okay. like to do, it, what I would like to do is have Phil talk to him so that between you two you can figure it out. I don't want to get in the middle of that. I, I it's not my thing. Sure, I'm glad to. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, we need some support. I can help out. Okay, perfect. Okay. Other other issues? Do you want to talk about your credit card? <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of other things we need to uh, we need to deal with here. Dorinda, this is the time for you. We you had Welch Park billing issues, and you had some other issue you wanted to talk about. Well, we'll keep going on the emergency management stuff. Um, I was part of the meeting today that they had, and they said there is things that they will need to purchase. Um, so the question becomes, um, I can, we're going to use the credit card where and when possible for the things, but the one, I don't know, does, should we just come out of, uh, discretionary fund or should we just create a line item that becomes a negative? We will have to track this because we could possibly get reimbursed. Um, I would say I would say take it out of the discretionary fund for the time being. That's what it's for. Okay. My question is, what kind of things are we talking about? How much are we talking about? We don't know. <coughs> that, that's a big unknown right now. Nobody knows. Um, Paul said that he thinks there's just some organiz organizational supplies that they're going to need to start mm -hmm. off with. 
Um, but once we start to get into this, we don't know if there'll be more expenses or not, um, which then led to, you know, how quickly could we disperse the monies that we're not going to be able to wait two weeks um, to be able to put it on an order and have you guys sign it. So um, I'm wondering My if... Standing to Rindus, he was he was talking to start with about a few hundred dollars, right? He didn't even give a dollar amount today. He just when I when I talked to him, he was talking about yellow legal pads and pens and okay, you know that kind of stuff. He wasn't he wasn't talking about buying computers or no. I don't think it's computers or anything like that. Um, he just said that there might be you know expenses down the road. Sure, but, you know, let's take it one step at a time. But to start out with, if he needs yellow legal pads and pencils or, or he was asking about dry erasers and whiteboards and, you know, we're, we're talking about a few hundred dollars probably, I think. Right. To start out with. Right, right. No, so I'm I would not... take, that, take that out of the contingency fund and just, just, you know, when you put the entry in and it's a... Uh, you know, it's an invoice to Capital Stationers or whoever it is for some supplies. Just put, you know, emergency management next to it or something so we can pick out those items if we need to. Well, I think we need to track it a little. I think it needs to be its own, you know, we need to show it somewhere, whether we reduce it. Because if they come in, if we have to document all this, if we have everything in one chart of account number, we'll be able to okay. put everything out. Okay, so set up. Set up, a, set up an account, but just move the money out of the contingency fund. Okay. All right. So make the everybody... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you just... Um, you know, I have no problem with, um, you know, Dorinda overseeing the use of the credit card because we're going to get, you know, detailed stories of what was spent, and I think we can track it. Uh, easily that way than as far as getting uh, reimbursement. So that's certainly not objectionable to me. Right. I agree. Okay. I mean, if we, if we start spending, you know, if, if we start spending real money, we're going to have to think about, uh, you know, does that hand over your yeah. sheet? I mean, does that mean less money for road repairs? You know, we'll have to deal with those things as they come up, but my quick yeah. answer is to start out with pay the bills and let's get going and, and see where it leads. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to let a big bill go through without you guys letting knowing, but I just wanted you to be aware this was going to happen. So. Yeah. Yep. No, that's thank good. you. Appreciate it, Dorinda. Uh, Mary. Uh, thank you. Um, Welch, uh, Welch Park. Um, we have two invoices here, one for stormwater operating fee from the Vermont yep. Watershed Management. Are we still paying that prorated? I believe the stormwater, we agreed we would, because we're part of that. Everybody's part of that. Okay. That's right. correct. Yes, so that's right. Any bills that pertain to the water should go to uh, Benderson. Right. Okay, I just wanted to double check on that. The other bill is for a uh, senior survey tech from Chase and Chase for assemble Welch Park plans, an hour and a half of work, and that was from Febu dated February 3rd. Who's that from? Chase and Chase surveyors. Oh, oh that's for that's for work with regard to to straightening out uh, boundaries and other issues that came up through our rewriting of the bylaws. So yes, that should be. Yeah. So that's prorated. That okay. Association prorated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, did we ever did we ever get the stuff back from uh, Riley about the bylaws and all of that? Because I feel like I didn't ever get enough no, on that. No, they no. He took he took them and we never came back. And that was the third thing that Carl Bailing um, was in last week and was talking to me. This was supposed to be settled by now, and he wants to know what's happening and why nothing's happening. I know John Riley said it would only take a couple of weeks. Well, it <laughs> was supposed to. I, 
I remember I remember getting an email from from John, and there was like one more signature needed from from uh, from Benderson, and they'd agreed to sign. So I mean, that's a good question. We should follow up. I'll I'll uh, I'll give John Riley a call tomorrow and just say, hey, what gives? What are we What are we yeah. doing? Where are we? Yeah, because I the thought, other I thought you had a December thirty first the way you thought it would be done by. Well, I think, I mean, my understanding was it was all done or virtually done, but I agree. I haven't seen anything come back either, so that's a good But there hasn't been question. any The other thing we haven't, uh, we, haven't, we haven't dealt with is uh, relieving Dorinda of the accounting, uh, accounting part of this and hiring an accountant to, to take care of that. And I know uh, Carl was working on that, but I don't know where that stands, so... I'll light a fire under him on that subject as well. Well, there haven't been any more meetings because I'm on the board too. So, I mean, if you got an email that things have happened, I didn't get that email. I didn't even know that there had been something from John Riley. So, just saying. <laughs> I'm glad something's happened. Well, I'm sorry, Mary. I'm sorry, Mary, if you didn't, if you didn't get I mean, I wasn't. I, my impression was he was handling it. It was all ongoing, and it was going to be coming back to us. So, you know, I don't have any final. I don't have any final thing either. And I don't know if you if you weren't included in those emails. I'm sorry about that. I don't know. If that's probably Carl's fault, but it's my fault for not bringing it to his attention. So I'll I'll make sure that happens. Thank you. We need to bring this. We we went, we moved so far so fast. Now we just need to make sure we bring it to conclusion. I couldn't agree more. And one last question, which is just really for Phil. Do you happen to have the original invoice um, from that notice that you had sent me? That was just a notice. Do you have an, an original? I, yes, I think I can find it. I didn't get a chance to get back to you. I saw that email. But, yeah, I do think I have the original. And uh, later on tonight or tomorrow, I'll take a look and get that to you. Okay, because there's no address. It says to send it to the remit address on the original bill, and we don't have the original yeah. bill. Okay. I didn't even realize that when I, when I saw the, you know, the, the notice that it didn't have an address. But, yeah, I think I can find that during the Okay, awesome. Thank you. And I think okay, that's sure. everything I've got. Okay, thanks. Okay. Brenda. Do we have a motion to approve the February 18th select board minutes? So moved, Mary. Second. Steve, second. Thanks, Steve. Um, all in favor, I'll call the roll, Steve. Aye. Phil? Aye. Mary? Aye. Liz? Aye. Peter? Aye. Update on computer password issues. Phil, I presume that's you. Yeah. Um, hang on just a minute here. Um, I just wanted to take it off speakerphone. So where we stand right now, and I think we're going to be stalled for a little while, but we were um, starting to do the installations, and I would say we're probably two-thirds of the way done with Tech Group. And then I ended up having a long, long, long conversation with Ruben. Uh, because I needed some information and some access uh, from them in terms of the network. He um, indicated to me that he was extremely uncomfortable handing over access to another vendor. Um, and I, you know, I understand that. Um, but we, you know, we talked about where things were and I even talked to him about the possibility of possibly having a couple of different vendors do different parts of our tech support. Um, he really was not interested in entertaining that. It seemed like it was, a, you know, he, 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 he said, you know, the sense that he had was that, you know, you get into a, then everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else, and he didn't want to get into that. So we are... Um, I think we're left with making a decision, and it, it, it's kind of an awkward decision, if you will, but if we, in fact, are going to stop using RB, then I think... Who's got that call? 
that I think we're going to have to terminate that contract or ride that contract out to the end, then hire the other vendor and proceed from there. Um, or decide to stay with RB, pay Tech Group for the work that they've done, which is actually fairly minimal, and move forward from there. Um, and I think that's that's kind of where we find ourselves. So what's your recommendation? What was your recommendation? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you guys were going to ask that. I mean, I, for one, am willing to raise my hand and say, you know, RB has been okay, but there have been consistent issues. So the whole reason we went to Tech Group yeah. is to see if there was an alternative, and we've been, as far as I know, we've been happy with them, not that they've done that much for us. So, you know, I mean, Ruben was supposed to have regular meetings with us. He was supposed to do all this stuff, promised yeah. to yeah. do all this stuff. He hasn't done any of it. No, I know. And suddenly I got his yeah. attention that, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, and you're right, Peter. I absolutely agree. We haven't done that much with Tech Group yet. I spent the morning there with uh, Anthony, who was the tech that they sent. And honestly, I was really very impressed. In, I think, three hours worth of time, he did most of the setup on four machines. And he just was, he was just going from one machine to the other. He set the stuff up. He was extremely efficient. Um, and I, you know, he, you know, he seemed knowledgeable. Um, he wasn't spending a lot of, wasting a lot of time talking or chatting about stuff. He was just doing his work and, and plowing through it. So, I mean, the thing we don't know, honestly, and, and as maybe in this interim we can take advantage of this kind of, you know, the pandemic situation um, and try and get more information about what we think the overall costs might be with that group, um, which we really hadn't, we didn't go down that road when we, we had our initial meetings with them. But I mean, and again, I, I left it with, with Ruben, he, and he was very professional and, and he said, look, I understand. Obviously, you know, you own the passwords. Um, you decide to drop us and go with somebody else. I am going to, um, you know, you know, I'm going to I'm going to participate the way I need to and help you make that transition. So, you know, he was he was good. He was professional about that. Um, you know, and that's where that's where we stay. I'm glad to handle it. You know, either way we go. Well, any any comments? So, what Peter's question number one is. And, and I should know the answer to this, but I'm, but I'm uncertain, so I'm asking you. Do we have a 12-month contract with RB? Yeah, I think so, from what I could determine. So, and that, but, but the question is, I don't know, remember when that ends. Probably not until a few months down the road. Well, we need, we need to find out the answer to that, however we do that. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I think maybe what we do is uh, ask both of them for a proposal. Ask, ask RB for an updated proposal and don't make any promises you can't keep. And uh, ask Tech Group for a proposal. Mm -hmm. The only problem with that is that's going to delay us getting our new computers up and running. So I guess my conclusion is we need to go to RB and do whatever we need to do to get those computers working. To get them up yeah. and running. Yeah. 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 And we, you know, we're under contract. We've got a certain number of hours. You know, Tech Group's done some work. It shouldn't be very hard to, to make the next step um, so that we're ready to go. Um, and does, that make, does that make sense to the other board members? Well, I have a question. Yeah. I mean, did Tech Group do something that R&D was supposed to have done and didn't do? No. No. No, this is really just an issue between, and you, you, you see this very often, between tech support groups, they do not necessarily play well with one another. Um, right. And they all get very paranoid about, well, if I give you our logons and you go in and mess something up, uh, then we're responsible for it. Yes. Okay. I, I understand. But no, tell, I mean, you know, RB's done what they needed to do. 
Um, you know, our concern really had to do with cost and efficiency. And as Peter said, you know, we've been supposed to be having, you know, these regular update meetings, and they haven't occurred. So, um, you know, anybody else want to weigh in? Steve, Liz? No, I'm fine with whatever you guys decide on that. Okay. Liz? I would kind of play the contract out, but I, I, I feel like we ought to go with the other group when that contract's over. Okay. Yeah, but let's get a let's get a proposal from yeah. first. Let's make sure we're not biting off our nose to spite our face here. Yeah, I, exactly. Um, this um, is Liz, I just want to say yeah. that um, Ruben has been on our board, and I don't want to like get too involved in it. So I would defer to oh. um, to you guys. I mean, to you, Phil, and what you think is the best. Um, uh, the you know the both fiscally. Sure. It's not just about fiscal, but it's about the service. So. Yeah. You know, it costs yeah. a little more to have great service. That's cool. One thing that I do want us to always be cognizant of when we're dealing with small businesses is that sometimes a small business costs more because they give their employees benefits like health care and retirement. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. supporting someone who's cheaper um, may not be in the best interest of supporting our community. Um, so I just right. want to be mindful of that, that cheap doesn't mean that or, or, in, or, or more expensive doesn't necessarily mean that they're providing a better service, it's that they're giving their workers a better quality of life. Yes, no, I think that's, that's I a very, very good point. I agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. And, uh, you know, Ruben is a friend of mine. He did all our stuff and is still doing all the stuff at Noel Johnson. I've known him for a lot of years, and uh, I have a lot of respect for him and the organization he's built. But whether he has you know, bigger clients and he doesn't just, he isn't that interested in us or he's too busy or I don't know what the issue is, but he certainly yeah. treated us, to put it bluntly, like second-class citizens. And I don't like the feeling. So, yeah. you know, maybe he can do better. I don't know. But uh, we've gone this far with Tech Group. I think giving them a chance yeah. to give us a proposal and, and, and thinking about it uh, makes sense. Yeah, I agree, I, and and I definitely think you know we had a little bit of a rocky start with some of the work that the RB was doing, but things seem to have leveled out. They certainly have people who are very knowledgeable. I would think group size or business size. I, I think they're probably fairly similar, although I think Ruben's got some clients that are obviously much bigger than we are. And that necessarily gets his focus more than we do. Um, and from what I have looked at with Tech Group, they tend to support more schools and town offices and I think maybe just have a little bit better understanding of what the needs of a municipal government are. So. Um, I like the idea, you know, I mean, I think you're right, Peter. Let, you know, we'll, we'll get RB to finish up the installation so we can get ourselves online and solve our Windows 7 issues and then pop, uh, pop, um, look at when the contract expires and ask for both to give us comprehensive proposals. I'm not expecting Tech Group to be vastly cheaper than RB. Um, I think maybe a little bit, but not vastly. But we might get a higher level of service, and that's kind of what I think both Peter and I have been hoping for. So, the other is that thing I would say is harkening, harkening back to this email thing, which we, we here we are, you know, whatever it is, nine months later, and we still yeah. don't have emails up and running. You know, right. the proposal that Ruben gave us of how to do the email was horrendously expensive. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. And what, I mean, and what I mean, you said, this is crazy. Right. We shouldn't be doing this. We need to look at other options. So that's, no. What, no. that's what started this whole thing. And when we pushed back to Ruben, his comment to me was, well, this is the right way to do it, so you should do it this way, even though it's very right. expensive. And I, yeah. I said, Ruben, I'm not sure. A, I don't think we, we need that level you're proposing, and B, we have to watch every damn penny. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, some of that delay. To that. So, I know, but yeah. Yeah. So some of that delay is my fault, no, Peter. You know, I mean, because I've been trying to just, you know, fill that gap and get that done. But again, you know, <laughs> especially with the new grandkid. <laughs> <laughs> my, my time no, is a little not, bit I'm more not, limited than I thought. Than you feel at all. I'm just saying that it, that, that it all got it spiraled out of control when we got that yeah. post from Ruben, and I don't have the numbers at my fingertips. Oh, but it was, was time ago. it was unbelievably expensive. It yeah, made my eyes pop. I so, right. Anyway, right. Yeah, and, uh, I, and I agree with you. I mean, his response to it was, here's what we're recommending. We want you to do it that way. And, you know, some of the discussions I had with uh, Tech Group was, well, we don't do email. How do you want to do it? We'll help you do that, which is like a very different response. So, okay. I'm, I think I'm good. I think I got direction from you guys that I will dig into it and let you know where I go. Good. Say it again. Who's talking? We're on quarantine. What? Hello? Hello? Do we lose Peter? Okay, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So we need to keep, good. We need to keep okay. moving, guys. We, yeah. we, uh... We've received, I'm under correspondence, we received a, a letter from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns notifying yeah. her not the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Who is uh, it, Sarah? The Vermont Land Trust. Vermont Land Trust, thank you. Notifying the board of plans to place a permanent conservation easement on 88 acres of land owned by Sarah Seidman and Scott Harrower in Culver Hill Road and an intent to request a $5,000 donation from the Town Conservation Fund to do so. So, you know, I looked at that little map they sent. Um, I, uh, I am not an expert on these conservation easements, but I have been involved in a few of them over the years. Basically, you know, what it, what it means is that that land is going to have to be used for agriculture forever. So, they can sell the land, but it's got to, its limitations are are severely reduced. Now, is that what the town should be spending money on? I don't know the answer to that. No. I mean that really no. that really benefits, and I I understand that that, uh, that Sarah and Scott are giving up something, and they're probably you know, and it absolutely reduces reduces the price of uh, or the value of their of their land, but it's also their interest to keep that land in farming. I just, I, I just, and I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just asking the question because we're going to get, we're going to get asked. We haven't committed to anything, and I just have doubts about how that, how we should be spending our conservation funds. So that's just. Don't you yeah. think we should be sending it to the conservation committee for them to evaluate it, and then yeah. it come to the board? Yeah. 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 I presume that's the way it would go. So this is just like so now, a, I mean, I think we should wait to see what they have to say about it. Yeah. Hi. So Peter. when we oh, when we get the request, that's how we'll handle it. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm I'm just saying, when we get the the letter saying you know we're requesting a donation of five thousand dollars, we're going to further refer that to the conservation committee and have them make a recommendation back to us and then we can make a decision. Well, I, I just want to be clear that I did have discussions with uh, with these guys and told them how it, how it instructed them how, how the process went. So they have already sent a separate letter to the uh, Conservation Commission and if the Conservation Commission meets um, they will discuss it and then that make a recommendation and at that point that's the point where the board should have a discussion about whether or not to accept that, whatever recommendation that is, depending on what the MCC says. That's exactly right. Okay, perfect. But not now. That's perfect. Yep. Please no, answer. not but now at all. Right. Right. Good. But keep it with when they do it, when they have their meeting, when they talk about it, do it then. Trust me on this, because it'll go in one ear and out the other. Okay, so the the uh, the next issue is uh, we received was it to the select board, Sarah? Uh, well, the the Doug Ron uh, sent my his beef about me. He sent it to the select board, yes, and also to me. He sent it to me right. and to you. Right. 
complaining about uh, Sarah's demeanor at town meeting and her telling him that he can't socialize with his neighbors when he's uh, when he's in the voting in the voting process. Yes, that's correct. So my uh, my my take on that is, you know. He needs to take direction from her. If he isn't happy with what she has to say, he should refer it to the Board of Civil Authority. But um, it isn't it isn't good to have people jibber jabbering and socializing with their neighbors when they're when they're in the voting line and voting process. So I'm sorry that he got his his knickers in a twist, as they say. But Sarah was only doing what she's supposed to do. Right. This is Steve. And I would here. also point out that she has said the same thing to me several times. So I'm. Guilty too. That, yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just just to to clarify, I think that's I think you're right. If anybody has a complaint about how I behaved at the um, at a, an election, you know, I am a separately elected town clerk, but I'm also part of the board of civil authority, which does oversee elections as well. And you know, if you want to make a complaint to that, you should make it to the board of civil authority. So. Just right. look at the chain of command. I don't. I don't mind him complaining. He's welcome to complain. There is a. There have been some studies that have been done that women are afraid don't come to the polls because they're afraid they'll make the wrong decision. Men don't come to the po polls because they'll do the process wrong. So uh, I listened to that and I actually thought, okay, next time I I will try to put up a policy so that it's less of a personal interaction. And maybe he could read that policy ahead of time and therefore not have a woman come up and say, you're doing it wrong. Sure. This is Phil. Um, I'm sure you Sarah, what about the sign that, that um, we have? Sorry, Sarah. Sorry. Uh, Sarah, what about some signs that if people enter the polling area that says, you know, yeah, Phil. That's, no talking. that's exactly what I'm talking about. I think that that's what that, that I okay. think that that would avoid a whole bunch of problems down the future I, I, and down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, and then when I violate that, you can just point at the sign. Right. Correct. There you go. I I actually had a sign out this uh, during early voting referring to the statute that required people to declare that they needed either a Republican or Democratic ballot when they were voting for yeah. the presidential primary. And that went a long, long way to, you know, people just read it, saw it, said, okay. And yes, I think yeah. that that's the lesson I took from this is, is the value of signage, clear signage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're good on that one. Um, our last item is a letter from Sorsha Anderson objecting to a personal conversation initiated by Lister Amy Whitehorn at town meeting. Amy's here. Still here. I know. So that letter but was I sent. Never saw the letter. The letter was sent to you all, but it should have been sent to me directly as an elected official. Um, the conversation I had with her was a, a, on a personal note. It had to do with um, it had to do with tax information and her residence, and that's personal. And I was not at town meeting. It was prior to the start of town meeting, just in the gym. I did respond to her, and I have not heard from her further. But it's not really in your bailiwick, to put it politely. Well, I guess all I would suggest, and it's probably, again, the, maybe the Board of Civil Authority, but is it appropriate to be approaching people about list or business at town meeting? That's my only question. Town meeting had not yet commenced. It was just in the gym when lots of other people were meeting up with folks that they don't see and talking. Okay. I mean, I just just a comment. I would avoid those conversations in that yeah. circumstance in the future if you can, and I have no authority at all to tell you to do that. So it's just a recommendation for me. Yeah, Peter, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, you know, we have no authority, but um, I think avoiding that kind of interaction in those public places is probably the smarter way to go. Um, if you're sending letters to people, send the letter, let, let it fast hand, 
uh, Joe would confront somebody and have a personal interaction with them about it. And again, like you said, just a recommendation. Okay. And this is Liz. I would second that recommendation. I spoke um, with Sorsha who felt um, very attacked um, at that in that process, and she felt like she had communicated in a way that um, was clear that she was going to take care of the situation. Um, yet, the, yet uh, the lister continued to pressure uh, Sorsha, and it sounded in. From, from what I understood to be not um, appropriate and somewhat aggressive. And we, I would say from, from just a regular standpoint of being a townsperson that I would hope that the people who represent us in town are representing in a professional uh, way that, um, that instills confidence in the people um, uh, who are our community members. So that's just my comment. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Mary? Steve? <laughs> I support all the other comments that have been previously made. <laughs> okay. Steve? I, 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 no. Enough on uh, enough on that subject. Well, actually, How Peter, are we handle Peter, the orders? Peter, Peter, what? please. So, um, I appreciate your recommendations. I think that your comments that were just shared were premised on what was contained within the letter that Ms. Anderson wrote. You weren't there, and she has not yet contacted me directly. So it's really not appropriate for even the tenor of your recommendations to me to make a presumption that I was being aggressive or do the out, speaking out of turn or in some way that was not appropriate. So I, I want you to recognize that because I would not under any situation, address any of you all if you received a nasty letter from someone in town about an interaction that you had with them one-on-one, -on -one. period. I think it's inappropriate. It's also inappropriate that we continue this without even her being present. So it was a conversation between myself and Sorsha, Ms. Anderson. It really was to do with Lister business. And it was intended to be polite and friendly. Um, and I, again, appreciate that you want to share your guidance with me. But please recognize that your recommendations are premised on a letter that you received, which, were I not the person I am, some might consider libelous. Okay? So let's, if we could leave it there please, and thank you again for your thoughts. Okay. okay. So, uh, Dorinda, how are we going to handle the orders? Um, well, uh, we sent you I... copies of them, and they're in the office yep. here to be signed. Um, okay. If, mm -hmm. if you can give me verbal authorization tonight, I will mail out the checks tomorrow. And then you can sign them, or you can either sign them and um, email them back to Sarah if you have the ability to do that. Or um, I I, I said the, I emailed you guys all the warrants and just asked if you could email an approval yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah, and I, I don't have them. Well, I sent no. them. I sent them for the middle six. This is Steve. Yeah. yeah. I thought a lot of people were stopping in to sign them tomorrow. Look, at, I'm trying to. I will stop in and sign them. This is Steve. Mm. I don't mind stopping in and signing. I'm just saying, I for some reason I never received them, and I'm looking again for my email now, and I still don't have them. They're from the Middlesex Treasurer's email. Did did none of you get them? I got it. I, got I did. Them. Okay, well, I'll send it to you again, Peter. You know, we're really trying to, I'm really trying to avoid traffic in the office here, but if you want to come in, you can sign them. She would prefer them by no. email back. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm asking the question. So the question is, assuming we all get them and can review them, yeah. by us 
responding with an email or signing the order and scanning it back to you, that's sufficient. We don't need to come into the office. That's so correct. That's correct. I believe that the, the email will suffice. If you say, I've read the orders and I approve them, um, you know, then I can attach all that to the warrant and you'll be fine. And we can just put that in our records or I'll put it in the minutes. I'll just say in the minutes that the, the uh, orders were reviewed by email and the email responses uh, and, you know, there were, they were approved. I'll just, if you could just do it that way, that would save a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Anybody else get this email or am I the only one who didn't get it? Oh, it looks like I got the email, but I didn't look at the warrants because I thought it was going to stop in. Warrants. This is Liz. I, I got something about how I had to verbally sign or I had to like email something saying yes, I approve. Mm -hmm. Right, and there should be. Right, that's what I got. Oh, okay. here it is. I got it. I'm sorry, I have it. It's here. I didn't see it. I got it. And Mary, you should that's be amazing. staying home. You prefer the email rather than coming in to sign it. Mary, I'm going to give you the lecture that I've been giving people your, in your situation. You do not, you should.